Welcome inside the Hall of Fame. I'm Booker T, six-time world champ. Got my man Brad Gilmore here with me. Special guest, ladies and gentlemen, the nature boy, Rick Flair is inside the Hall. He's already two-time Hall of Fame, but today he's inside the Hall of Fame with myself. Hey, man, how you feeling, Rick? I'm doing great, Book. Thanks, man. Thanks for asking. I've been looking forward to doing this. We missed each other a couple times. Yeah, I man. was on the island, and uh, geez, the dang world seems like it's upside down right now. But I'm doing great. Glad to be hey, talking to you. Last time we really uh, talked, man, yeah, you was in uh, over there on the island, man, and uh, I was yeah. wishing oh, I, I was I was I was I was, I was, I, was wish, I was wishing I was there with you, man. I swear, man. Yeah, man, I know. I I think the wise of talk. I think we're doing that. <laughs> All it is is a compound with a bunch of booze in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like on an island, man, with a bunch of booze. Hey, man, that's all good, man. You can't go wrong with yeah, that. Yeah, compound of drinking, yeah. <laughs> no, Rick, man, uh, I'm glad you uh, got a chance to sit down with me. But first and foremost, I want to say, um, how's Wendy doing, man? She's doing great, much better. Yeah, oh. not 100%, but she's doing much better. It just, um, it's been uh, over three weeks now. But um, it just was a nightmare. All of a sudden, it just came on her. And uh, then, of course, you, you backtrack and figure out where it came from. And uh, she just, uh, she was real sick. I'd take her to the hospital twice and, uh, um, you know, for IV once. And then just, um, you know, just to make sure she was okay. You know what? You never know. And, of course, they released her both times. But after keeping her for a couple hours. But you can't be careful enough. Everything is. You know, in the world that I live in lately, you just double, double you double think, double check, and, uh, you know, cross-examine everybody. <laughs> it's, it's brutal. <laughs> you know? No, and I had those four, I had four heart operations. I know I've told this to a few people, but they don't believe it. In, in the seven weeks, with four different doctors doing it. Wow. So that was back in May of 19. You don't, I was so flipped when I came out of their book, I didn't, I just couldn't comprehend it. trying to, you know, get four different opinions from four different people and then, you know, four different kind of surgeries, you know, pacemaker installation. Then they they go in and they want, and the thing where they put the catheter up you to make sure that uh, you don't have any blockage. Yeah. Then they shock you right. to get the rhythm. Of the, you know, they put you to sleep to shock you. Um, to get your heart or the rhythm right back in it, right? And then the fourth one was to put in a different kind of pacemaker. So, wow, Jesus. So. <laughs> well, I, I tell you what, man. It, it um, it, I always say, um, preparation is the only luck you're ever going to have. And right now, with Wendy being down, you're prepared more than anyone to be able to step in there and make sure she get through this thing. Okay, man. Make sure you send her my love and. You know, my prayers. Uh, I will, I, I will for sure. Yeah, she's, she's upstairs. Um, the house is pretty big, you know, which is nice. And she's way upstairs. You know, she's isolated. And uh, I don't think she'd even come downstairs, but once in the last, just in the last couple of days for the first time. Not down here to see me, but just down the stairs, but they're like to the front door or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. So even though you, they say two weeks, and this has been three you just never know, right? Yeah. That exactly. thing with Jack Nicholas. Did you watch that? I know you I know you like golf, but you yeah, watch I'm a huge you watch I'm Jack huge. Nicholas and his wife, they had it three times. Yeah, yeah. I mean this, this thing is crazy, man. In your lifetime, did you ever imagine seeing something like this? No, no, I didn't, to be quite honest with you. You know, I I, I was telling someone the other day, you just um you know, you just, you just hope that, uh, you know, you look at, you, I look at my age, you're, you're a young guy still, but you just want to know what the kids are, you know, your kids and my grandkids and even even my kids now, what, what do they have to, you know, to look forward to? It's, it's such an un, unknown right now, and it's just very disturbing. Um, yeah. You know, I guess everybody's insecure and on edge, and, uh, you know, I, I hadn't seen this before, I don't think, in, in my lifetime, so. Um, and I've seen a lot, so um, you know all we can do is hope for the best for everybody. You know, that's what uh, you know. What that's one reason I'm glad I got you on um, because 
you know, like I say, you was in, in Turks and Caicos not too long ago, and, and you literally send me and Charmel an invite to come to Turks and Caicos and hang out. But come on out. I mean, you like literally like you know, it was talk, we talked about that for quite some time, too. Um, and I know how close that we have gotten over the years. And now we see turmoil in the streets, you know, people looking at each other, yeah. you know, um, and, and not sure what and wondering what people are thinking, you know, um, Man, I know it could be a better place, and I'm just hoping we get back, get back there and get past this. Hopefully, we'll get past this, I'm, and I'm sure we will. But um, I want to talk about you, man. I want to talk about your career. I want to talk about, you know, I want to see. It's, it's a song, um, uh, John Legend and Ti, as it's called, uh, Slideshow. And uh, I, when I think about that song, I, I think about my grandfather actually, uh, because my grandfather he lived to be 102 years old. He was born in 1889. And he lived to the 90s. And um, I always wondered, man, if I could see through his eyes, man, just, you know, that slideshow coming from back then all the way to now, what, you know, what it would be like and how I would feel. And I think that same thing about you, um, Rick, um, because when you um, came to town, you know, I was I was a young kid. And, um, when, when, and when you came to town, you was like a big deal. You was like a huge rock star. As far as, you know, Sam Houston Coliseum goes, as far as wrestling goes here in the city of Houston, and everybody flocked to the Sam Houston Coliseum when they knew Nature Boy Rick Flair was coming to town. I want to I wanna go through, I want to see through your eyes just for a second what it was like here in Houston, Texas, at that Sam Houston Coliseum in wrestling at that time. Just talk to me about that. Well, the first time I was over there and, uh, Working for Paul was in the seventies, but it's you know it's it's just funny. This is a great story that a lot of people don't realize. I think you probably know the history of it, but um, they um the NWA Paul Bosch was a member of forever, and until Harley decided, which is something you know, this is our diary of you and I talking about it. Same thing, Harley decided. Skip a shot. Well, I did it without with permission, even though Bischoff denied it. Harley just called Bosch and said, "I'm going to my son's wrestling tournament," and didn't show up. And after that, Paul Bosch said, um, "Told uh, Sam Mushnick, he said, hey, 'Hey, I'm going to go with Vern Gagne and use Buckwinkle as the champion.' So the way I got there as world champion, all those years later, was with Bill Watts. So, um, otherwise, I would have never got to go to the great, great town of Houston because, you know, Paul was one of the best payoff guys in the business. So he and a guy okay. named Don Owen paid that 10% of the champion, which was, you know, right off the top. So, wow. Um, that was one of those deals that everybody was supposed to pay 10%. For, you know, they, you know, wrestling promoters don't want <laughs> Until Jimmy Crock and Vince came along, I don't know. <laughs> Jeez. You know what I mean? We, <laughs> one of the things that was good about Vince taking over was one guy was counting all the money. So, and God, you know, he he wants to pay it. God already knows he's paying everybody a lot of money now. Yes, indeed. You know, and uh, thank God for him. But uh, prior to Vince, you know, people look at the negative side of all that time in the business. People went out of business, but the guys that were fortunate enough to end up with the WWE or end up with Crockett when Crockett got got rolling were the only guys making some money because the other promoters just didn't pay. You know, they counted the door. There was nobody at the door. Wives were being a ticket, were selling the tickets. <laughs> you know, you've heard the story. You know, and you sound like you you sound like you're talking about reality and wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I am. I am in the seventies and uh, early eighties. Look at, hey, I wrestled an hour in front of two hundred people in a ten thousand seat building many yeah. times in, in in the great state of Kansas for Bob Goggle. Now he you know, still owes me money. <laughs> that's, one thing, that's one thing that I um, you know admired about you, Rick. Um, uh, guys like you, um, guys like Nick Bockwinkle, guys like JYD. Um, junkyard dog. I want I, you guys. You know, I emulated. I want to be like you guys. Um, when I watch you as a young guy, you talk about those two hundred um, people in, in that arena. 
but but I remember uh, Rick Flair pretty much going all out. You know, you was always, you know, balls to the walls. You yeah. never was one of those guys who, um, you know, just rested on your laws and went out there. You went out there and gave that 200 people 110%. What was that like um, working um, back well, in the You know, it, back then, and much like yourself, it was a matter of pride. Uh, you know, it, it didn't um, – you know, it was so funny. I, I made less money as the world champion the first year I had the belt in 81 because I didn't draw any money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nobody knew who the hell I was. Um, I made less money as the world champion than I made the year before working for Crockett, traveling all over the world. So think about that. I made money in Crockett territory. I made money in Japan for Baba. I made money in Florida and Georgia, but man, Kansas, Portland, you know, wherever else I went, I mean, a lot of places. Oh, I made money in Dallas. Dallas was good. And Bill Watts, um, in spite of what people thought, Bill Watts made me good. But um, it's that first time I had to build, I didn't, I, I didn't draw any money. I mean, I was, some people knew who I was in the South, but that was my first, you know, I'd just been on TBS which really didn't have much saturation at that point in time with the exception of the Ohio, Pennsylvania area, which we all know about. That was a gold mine, but anything West of Chicago, um, you know, even when I first went to Vince in the nineties, a lot of people didn't know who I was. The Turner didn't have that kind of saturation. So everything involved, it evolved at a different time for me. When I got the belt back in 83 from Harley, then I was ready as a uh, performer, and um, and the and the people knew me. And I, but the second time around, and then from that point on, you know, we were selling out, doing good business. So um, everything is timing, and you know that I've been so fortunate that I was during my runs um, that I had. And I'll think about it. You know, everybody has to have a partner. I started out with Wahoo. From Wahoo, and, and I'm tag team with Johnny Valentine. I named any beer in Houston, you know, like you know the Bible. Then <laughs> Johnny's in the plane wreck with me, right? Johnny gets paralyzed. I go come become a single tag with his son Greg. From there, I go become a single the U.S. champion. I'm wrestling Bobo Brazil. How, how's that for a name? <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, that's right. I wrestled Bobo for an hour. Wow. One night, no form. <laughs> yeah, how many headbutts can you take, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if I thought Rufus wore me, I'll, uh, Bobo killed me, man. <laughs> so, um, but um, it just goes to show, and I, when I say tell people I've wrestled everybody, I have. Um, so then, uh, to, to become the world champion, and then I had, uh, I had Steamboat, Sting, uh, Dusty Rhodes, I mean, Butch Reed, um, just a, a Mike Graham, Mike Rotundo, Barry Windham, Magnum TA. I mean, a ton of guys that were really, really good to work with. So it just, uh, it, it just felt, I don't think, I think my story is different than a lot of guys because I just, the pieces came together. Hey, you know, uh, great. You know we, I hear, we hear a lot about, you know, today's wrestler, um, um, talk about and it's all on social media. Um, you know, the, the, the writers aren't writing anything for me. You know, uh, man, I'm not, I can't get over because no one's doing, I mean, you know, before you ever got to WWE, before you did a WWE run, had anyone ever wrote anything for Ric Flair to get Ric Flair's character over? No, no, absolutely not. But, um, <clears throat> So I can I guess to throw this in because it's gonna come up, you know, in the next couple of minutes. Um, we we mean myself even even before you because you you came along at a time when I think um, when you started be getting big and you can help me with this was um, at a time when people were trying to uh, have more control and make it more scripted. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't I can't really remember. Um but certainly it, it, when you first got going in WCW, you did your own promos, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So I tried to figure out what time frame 
those came in. But anyway, the point is, is that you're you're riding on the road like I am, or you're talking to your brother or your friend or your wife, and you're coming up with ideas, you're bouncing it off, and you're having fun doing it. Now, it, it, the atmosphere is just, um, I, I feel like it's a lot of pressure. And if they, if the kids are creative, um, it, it, you know, it, it's just kind of like, not desperation, but just trying to figure out um, who they are, which can take a long time. Does that make yeah. sense? Uh, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, you got a chance to, you know, um, as a young man, working, you know, in front of thousands of people, Texas Stadium with, you know, Kerry Von Erich and so many more big matches um, that were main event, pay-per-views, uh, caliber yeah. matches back then um, to hone your craft. Myself as a young man, I remember – getting a chance to work with Ricky Steamboat, uh, who was one of my all-time favorites in Germany for, yeah. 20, for 20 minutes. And I didn't say one word. And, and I went through that match. All I had to do was keep my ears open. And he was, was there. And yeah, and he was, he was going to take me somewhere. <laughs> and I was like, wow, after that match, I was like, man, yeah. I learned so much in that match than I could have at any wrestling school. And that was that WCW on tour, right? Exactly, exactly. But the same yeah, thing I with the tour. When, I, yeah. when, I got, when, I, when I got in the ring with you, the same thing. I learned so much from that one night as far as how to go out there and perform. You know, no school could have taught me that. What, you know, what, what, yeah. do you think, um, what do you think is missing um, from today's wrestling? I know we lost a lot of carpenters along the way. You know, Brody, you know, guys like Murdoch, guys like Henny, guys that could have really yeah. gave back to the business. But, you know, what do, what do you think it is? Oh, uh, I think it's, um, well, it, uh, it's the bat. It's the it's the Im immense number or huge number of characters, yeah, black wrestlers that I got to wrestle, and you probably did too, on the way up. I mean, you could probably list twenty guys that you can say you wrestled, you know, a hundred times. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I, I don't think there's anybody, with the exception of Randy Orton, right now on the roster. That's had that kind of experience and wrestled that many guys. So, I mean, maybe AJ. I'm trying to think. I've, I've got to think about it. Um, I don't believe it's going to but it's hard. Now, AJ is an example, just to change the subject, but on the same subject matter, AJ, Japan, he's been everywhere. And, you know, and I was absolutely, I, I thought, wow, when he came out the door his first time at WWE, you had to think to yourself, man, where has this guy been, right? What yeah. a reaction. Yeah. And, and that and all he'd been to was um, TNA, I guess Ring of Honor in Japan, right? Yeah. But yeah. they knew him when he came out the door. It was huge. So you, you can never speculate as to where someone catches uh, the public's eye. I mean, that's one of the things that you got to be careful of. Everywhere you go, you can, you're going to be judged for the moment. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's just what it is. But um, when he came out the door, that, that spoke volumes for the other promotions that you wouldn't have thought would have given him the recognition and the defining uh, audience that he's developed and uh, following with the WWE. Yeah, but AJ is, is kind of like, you know, you, you, you might not see it. It's almost like that. That like the wind, you can feel it, but you you can't touch it. Um, a AJ has been one of those guys, kind of like yourself, Rick. And, and people don't people don't really look at um, the wrestling business, you know, somewhat quite like I do. I'm looking at it from an educated yeah. eye. Um, I remember all the guys that you work with, and all the guys that you go out, had to go out there and get over um, and make look uh -huh. a certain way. Guys that couldn't make themselves look that good. How important yeah. it was for you to be that guy as well. Well, it was very important, um, but I, I don't by any means want to imply that um, that I um, look at that as being uh, a job, because I loved it. I mean, uh, and I told, I said this at his Hall of Fame induction, um, there's so many positive things to talk about with Sting, but the first time, when you, they put he and I together that time in Greensboro on the Clash of Champions up against WrestleMania, and Greensboro that night, and man, we went. Uh, you know, it would it would have been fifty eight minutes. We ended up going fifty five because the timekeeper got 
got messed up and I ended up sitting in his, in his finish for, you know, like a minute and a half, which was, you know, my fault, but actually I was screaming at the timekeeper myself, but that takes a lot. Just go out there and wrestle 50 minutes. You know that, I mean, it's, I mean, for him to pull that off, I've never gotten over that. Because a lot of a lot of a lot of young, he was just a young kid. His first time, when a lot of pressure, and man, he stepped right into it. And you would have never known that was his first time uh, uh, in a situation like that. I mean, I I'm sure you watched it. If you if you didn't, you remember the event. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Um, I, that's what I'm talking about. As far as I know Sting, you know, was capable of going out there and performing. But but sometimes, you know, it takes someone to actually bring it out of you and make you a better yeah. person. I know I've been in, in the ring with guys like that that have totally made me a, a better worker. Um, I, Randy Arden was one of the guys I tried to make a better worker. Um, it's not a whole lot yeah. of guys like, you know, like yourself, like myself, that's still around that can – drop some knowledge knowledge on these guys and hopefully they take it and run with it. But let's talk about that uh, for a second. Um, I tend to um, hold back on giving young guys knowledge these days um, of something that is legitimate, something that could really work for them just due to the fact, you know, they may look at me like I'm crazy and say, man, you don't know yeah. what you're talking about, but we don't, we don't do that anymore. Ah, how relevant um, you think wrestling, you know, uh, as far as the, the parts, bells and whistles that work for us back in the day are still relevant and can work today if these young guys were to go out there and utilize them? Well, here's the thing, you know, and it's funny, the word relevant is like such a huge word in our world today, right? Yeah. I mean, um, I mean, it, it, it just goes like, here I am, I'm 71. And I basically said this to Austin when I did his show. To even sit here and be on your show was an honor for me. So I'm talking to you, and you and I have been friends forever. And really, we only probably got to wrestle maybe 10, 12 times. We didn't get to wrestle that much. Yeah. We never really had a program because you were basically in the tag team when I was there, remember? Yep, yep. Yeah, so you know, I look at what you and I could have been, and I just – you know, one angle that never took place for whatever reason. But look at your career and look at the number of guys that you enhanced and made. I mean, I just, and I'm not saying it because you're here. There's a reason why you're in the Hall of Fame and there's a reason why the, the Harlem Heat is. Um, but, I mean, that's you. And that was your athletic ability. And I remember I said to you one time, and this <laughs> said, what the hell? Were you a gymnast, football player, whatever you could <laughs> No, play, I was a, uh, did something in the band. What was it again? Drum, drum major, drum right? major. Yeah, I go, I go, I go, you're kidding me. I go, where'd you get all that ability, man? <laughs> and, and on top of that, that I find out you're half tough. And I go, oh, shit. <laughs> he's a badass in the drum. <laughs> I mean, in the band. I tell people all the time. Go, the drum you know, yeah, I mean, like, you know, you're like, look at these, one of these guys you don't want to mess around with, too. That was part of your persona. Hey, man, drum major is like, so much, don't, <laughs> don't push the envelope. <laughs> the drum major is the leader of the band. <laughs> okay, well, that's, listen, I'm about as familiar with the band and orchestra as I am with the phone. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, well, I know what that. <laughs> all I know, I know, all I know about is wrestling. <laughs> I know my partner. Uh, I know my partner Brad's over here. It's chomping at the bit to get in. Man. Go, go ahead, yeah. Brad. No, go I, ahead, man. Fire away. I got several things, but you know, you know, Rick. Um, we just saw this this ten part documentary series about Michael Jordan, The Last Dance, and it was talking yeah. about how Michael Jordan was the greatest basketball player of all time. That's the phrase that's used to describe Ric Flair. To everybody, when it, when Booker was coming up, his generation, my generation, everyone said Ric Flair is the greatest of all time. So I've I've always wanted, wanted to ask uh, no, you. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Not let, let, let me add to that real quick. Yeah. Uh, I was at a uh, I was at a show. It was at uh, Sam Houston Coliseum. It was way back in the day. I swear to God. And uh, Ric Flair uh, was uh, was was on the show, and uh, Tiger Conway. Um, and, and, uh, told, told, me, told me and my brother, he said, 
that's the real boy there. <laughs> <laughs> we, hey, we, we started together in Charlotte, 1974. <laughs> we and the Tiger, man, you gave me a cauliflower year. <laughs> Maybe to catch out, Brad, but I had to oh, tell this no, story. No, that's, good. That, that's a good story. I bet, every time I came back to Houston, he'd come down. Yeah, what a great yeah. kid. What a great kid. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, I wanted to ask you, though, how does it feel to hear that described about yourself in an industry where thousands and thousands of guys have gone out there, put their blood, sweat, and tears out in that squared circle? You're regarded as the greatest of all time. And my follow-up to that is, who do you think is the greatest of all time? Well, uh, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm honored and thrilled. And, you know, it just, I think what happened, and this is, um, this is what the world that we live in now is that I, I was on TV literally up until last week, I've been on TV for 48 years. And then along comes YouTube, then along comes the internet, then comes the network. And like the network is taking a guy like me, it's even taking Booker, right? Or and any number of guys that are lucky enough to still be alive. And people are getting to see stuff they never saw. And, they, and they're going, wow. I mean, and YouTube, I mean, I'm not kidding. In my whole life, until I got sick in 2017, when I came home from the hospital and really, you know, I had I was still on an IV and I had the stoma, and I sat in the chair. I never, I I can honestly tell you, I don't think I ever watched anything but Sports Center for twenty five years, or maybe thirty, because I didn't watch TV. I was always doing something, and I have that book. You, 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 if you think about it, book will say, yeah, I flipped it on at two o'clock in the morning when I got in from wherever, driving or working or drinking or whatever. We're on the road. Out. Well, I mean, did you ever watch Netflix? We're on the road. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Working. No, hell no. We didn't know. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> Kevin, I mean, my stepdaughter goes, you want to watch Netflix? I said, what is that? This is three years ago. I was drinking. In August of or, when I came home, October of 2017. And now I've become a junkie to that stuff. And you start watching YouTube and you can see all the matches from the old days. You can see the guys which is unfortunate. Everybody knocks everybody. we got to be the only business in the world, which is a different subject, where everybody just knocks everybody. Yeah, it's terrible. Cool. You know what I mean? But that, we can talk about that later in the show. But um, it's just a whole new world. And for me, getting back to how I feel about that, I'm thrilled. But I think sometimes I just have, uh, I've owed them on me. <laughs> they, they're forced to watch you whether they want to or not and then when Offset came along with Ric Flair Drift hell they really hated me <laughs> <laughs> that, re that really made Bret Hart mad <laughs> <laughs> here he is the king of hip hop forget about wrestling <laughs> <laughs> I got Snoop Dogg saying I'm the, you know, the crown prince right I mean, oh my god <laughs> hey, Rick, hey, Rick uh, you know, um, one thing about the business uh, that I, I see today that's a little bit different than it was, you know, back in the day. Of course, um, it's the same. Uh, the moves are the same, you know, and the fans are still there. Um, but when I watch guys back in the day, just say, for instance, um, the first time I saw Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer in um, – yeah. And um, Hacksaw Jim Duggan work here in Houston. Uh, I, I thought the police should have been involved and someone should have gotten arrested um, because it, it, it was real. It actually, you know, cap, it came, you know, through the television as well like that. Yeah. Uh, sure. and you guys, you guys, you know, you lived it. But in the ring, it seemed like a little bit different than today. You guys believed it. Um, one hundred percent. Talk to me about that. Well, it was just one of those things. I mean, you didn't. Um, it, it, it was just. It, it, first of all, I want to. I have to say this because otherwise, I, it gets lost. It was the greatest thing in the. If if you want to be a wrestler and you're happy, 
with your position in wrestling, it's the greatest way in the world to make a living. Yes. You know, for guys like you and me, book. It really but is. It's a, it's a hard and sensitive business that makes you so tough and so insensitive from when I started because people, you I mean, you went to work if you had 104 fever, you I mean, you worked with broken fingers, you worked with dislocated. Where, I mean, I worked for two years, a year of each time with a torn, with a torn rotator cuff. Just because yeah. I didn't want to take the time off. And number two, after having one done, I didn't want to have the surgery because the rehab is so painful. Yeah. So, you know, I finally tore the other one. Uh, I third tear and um, I went into where they're going to operate on me. And the guy said, you know, this thing might heal itself. So, um, you know, getting back to the point I'm making, it, it makes you a tough guy. I mean, it, I, it, I don't know how people would define tough anymore because, the way I broke in with Vern Gagne, I mean, they beat us up so bad. By the day, I mean, uh, Billy Robinson and Vern. I mean, they didn't punch us in the mouth, but it, and that was that would have been, I'd rather have been punched in the mouth than have to run two miles in, you know, 25 degree weather outdoors and then do 500 feet squats and 200 push-ups. I, I mean, every day. Yeah. Before we did anything. I mean, I'm telling you, in that barn, the white set of Minnesota, where we all, the Terra, me, all of us, Hazel, Missouri. I mean, Hazel only weighed 180 pounds, and he had just won the AAU Nationals. You talk about the Iron Sheik, the character himself. I was there in the beginning. <laughs> you talk about a character book. <laughs> you get him, right? You know him, right? Oh, yeah. I was there when that monster broke in. <laughs> that, that's crazy. That crazy. Oh my God, I was there. <laughs> he refused. <laughs> oh, Billy Robinson. This is in the ring in the barn, right? It's 25 degrees. We're, we're dying. He tells Billy Robinson he can't turn him over. And Robinson couldn't. You know, in the uh, freestyle position where they lay in the stomach and you have to turn yeah, the head yeah, yeah. Up, right? Oh, Robinson. You probably heard the story with this. Robinson dropped his knee on his thigh in the referee's position, and man, Tadro couldn't walk for two months. I mean, have you, have you not heard that story, book? No. <laughs> oh my God, man! I mean, I right away we're all in line, right? I pushed Brenzel in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me tell you. When you do all that running in the free spot, I mean, that takes three hours. Just, just to get through that, this isn't even after a month of training. It still took that long to do all that. Or two and a half, right? Then they put you on your back and get on top of you. And, and to, to the point where you're just claustrophobic. I mean, it, 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 it works. Trust me. It, it, I was ready for the airplane. <laughs> but it's I real, know, though. But, when you get when you get when you get trained that way though, it, it, it's it, it's almost real to you. I, I, it's a story um, about. It is real. It, it is. It's a, it's a story about um, Stu Hart um, that I that, that I um, I use with my students, um, and it, and it said that um, Stu Hart in this dungeon when when a guy got shot to the turnbuckle, um, the ring should shift at least one inch. You know what I mean? Yeah. You should get that term oh, yeah. hard. And, and and that's what makes this business what it really is. And I almost tell my students, um, uh, as far as the camera, the camera can tell when you're just going out there to have a match, but it can't tell yeah. when you're going out there to have a fight. And that's what I, I saw when, when I watched you guys come out of that curtain. I didn't know who was going to win or lose. A lot of times I didn't care, but I knew I was going to see yeah. a fight. Um, I, I go back to 1987. It's a match between Jake the Snake and um, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. And, and the crowd yeah. is going so crazy. You would think it was a mob. You'd think it was, you know, uh, literally, you know, something that was about to happen that was so real. And, and today, I, I think, is it, is, it, is it the same with you or, or, or is it not? Uh, uh, what do you think need to be changed as far as that goes? Well, I think that, um, you know, I, I was thinking when you told me today or yesterday what we'd be talking about. Yeah. I think that um, 
it's kind of like I was, I made a post today thinking about you guys. It says, the one thing you could say about me is that I think I was believable from the standpoint that, and, and, and it wasn't, I wasn't trying to be a smart ass. I mean, when I hit you, Booker, I was whacking you. Yeah. Right? You never yeah. complained. A lot of guys complained about that, believe it or not. I'm not going to put any names out there, but a lot of guys, <laughs> but, but, but you never complain. And, and, and I used to, I'll tell you, I used to hit Ricky Steamboat, who is not as big a guy as you are. You, you've seen the, the matches. Yeah. Where, where, nobody could see through that. No, but he would bring it right back. He would bring it his power right back, man. That's why it was so yeah, he real. Beat, he, hey, how about Ronnie Garvin? He used to beat me into a oh, knot. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, and people people don't like that. But that's the way we started. Out. I mean, it was like someone said to me, well, "I'm going to punch you." Well, really? Where? <laughs> Where? I mean, I've been getting hit my whole life. I mean, you know, we talk about this stuff with the chairs in that book. I mean, geez, I can remember one time when. And this is a great story. This, this will go down. Somebody will pick this up for listening to your show. When Jack Bristol he told Brody that I don't bleed. <laughs> Brody said, I'm going to tear so hard. In the, mid, in the ring, we're all looking at the curtain. I'm going, oh, man. Jack's going to kill him. And that's what ever happened. <laughs> Brody in the mid- he Brody hit me with it there, but I mean, I, whatever he wanted to do was fine with me. <laughs> as long as he didn't drop me on my head, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm not going to bleed, really. I don't think oh, so, man. brother. Yeah, I got yeah. three of them on my finger right now just doing your show. <laughs> <laughs> I got a blade on three fingers. Just Facebook needs me to. Got me. That's why I can't be on the, on the visual with you. <laughs> Pretty to gig myself. <laughs> it's a quarter hour. <laughs> we, 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 um, Rick. I don't know if I'm the greatest of all time, but I am the best doctor. That's Sheldon Benjamin. <laughs> he was out there last night. <laughs> I yeah. told him the whole spiel. <laughs> you were there, book. I put 26 stitches in, in Sheldon one night. Yeah. <laughs> I said, "Hold still, but <laughs> oh my god!" <laughs> but uh, what, what Goldberg, t- Goldberg too. I got <laughs> Goldberg, Goldberg was screaming, "I'm hyperventilating! I'm hyperventilating!" <laughs> Shut up, you big baby! <laughs> You're playing in the NFL. <laughs> you were you were there for all that, book. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> yeah. Who do you think was the, Who do you think the doctor was that orchestrated all that shit? <laughs> Up until 10 years ago, I had five guys asking me to make their blade every night. <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Yeah. I, I, got, okay. I, got, I played it one time, man, one time in, in the Global Wrestling Federation. And I, and I, was, so scared, I, was, so scared, I was so scared to do it. Uh, I let Manny Fernandez do it for me. And, uh, oh, my God. That was your first mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even let him hold the blade. <laughs> I realized that after the fact. <laughs> oh I was bleeding oh, like yeah. a bitch. I, mean, was, I, like I, was, a I swear I thought I was Diva and Dudley for a second. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure, my God. Um, no, it was, uh, that was that was a big part of the business. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, man, but, but guys like, uh, I, I must say, um, I'm, I'm on Manny Fernandez right now, but Manny Fernandez, he definitely was one of those pioneers, just like yourself, man. He he made me yeah. believe wrestling was real. When I watched... Oh, yeah, man, he, was rugged. he was rugged. He was one of the most real professional wrestling that this business has ever produced. And I just want Manny Fernandez. I just, I just want, I just wanted to be known um, because he taught me so much um, back in the day. Like I said, along with yourself, man, uh, guys like yourself, guys like Manny Fernandez, uh, y'all taught me what, what wrestling really was. Um, and that was not to go out there and maybe you can agree with me or not on this. Um, but not to go out there and think about going down the highway, thinking about what spots uh, you and I did, but going down the yeah. highway, thinking about how we made those fans feel and they can't wait to get there next time we come back to town. That's what wrestling I thought was, was going out there and making the fans feel a certain way. Do you agree with me on that? I, I, I totally agree with that. 
that's how we get paid. I mean, that's how everything at the end of the day evens out for all the hard work and all the time. And I think the people that, uh, that are the most successful, I, I like to think is, is you, is, is, of you and I had seen two of those people, are people that gave the fans everything they wanted every night and more. Um, you know, I just thought to myself, going back to the Blade deal, I mean, I, I just, when I heard, you know, when I realized how much, you know, that was starting back in 74, when I first started doing it, um, when I realized that, that how much more that they got out of that, that's one of the reasons. People didn't make me do it. I, I, I don't want to give anybody the impression ever that anybody made me do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just I thought, God, if it, if it, if it makes them that crazy. I, I got no problem doing it. Let's come back and watch me do it again next week. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 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 I can stop at the Seven Eleven on the way into the arena. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know what, I say that because, you know, I hope the young guys out there that's listening to the show, I want to have you on the show, Rick, because for me, you know, you are the authority. You know, you are the one that 100%. You know, anyone should be able to go to and say, man, this guy, this that's the way I want to do it. Uh, that's why I want my career to ascend. Uh, and there's so many young guys out there hear it from this guy and hear it from that guy, and I wanted it to – Want them to hear from you and I just so they could kind of understand where we're coming from because I, I, I wouldn't say I'm controversial or anything like that, but I, I pretty much say what I feel. And when I see it on television, I pretty much talk about it, what I see and what, what needs to be changed because I want the business to be here for another hundred years. I want this thing to last oh. for, forever. You know, so if, if I could tell these guys, these young guys, anything that could help them, that's what I'm going to do. As far as, uh, what would you tell these young guys uh, if you just had them in a room and, and, and was able to school them on, on you know, just a, a little bit of knowledge? I, I have thought about asking uh, Vince uh, when I was there at TV to talk to everybody because, um, number one, um, I don't miss anything. Just if Even if Ashley's not wrestling, I want to see what she's up against in terms of competition within the women's division, right? Right. So then I watched the show. And so where I used to go, I would text the writer or whoever I'd say, if I wasn't there, I'd say, what say, right? Yeah. But then I'd bounce around. Now I just said, you know, I'm better off just watching the whole product because if I'm going to make an informed, if I'm going to be on your show, if I don't watch the product, then I really can't tell you what I think. So, I've made a point of watching everything. I even started watching NXT on a regular basis. Not just because I'm loyal to the company, but because, you know, Ashley went over to NXT and that I think uh, that the company is, is uh, making all three brands is going to attempt to it, but basically has, um, you know, made, made NXT the third brand. And I expect it to keep getting bigger. That goes back to what you said. We all hope the business has got to make it. We we need to all just say thank you, Vince, and, and do everything we can to support him so the business does make it so that I can say to you on this show, for the guys that are, are listening, when I was driving on the road in 1978 with Jack Mulligan and I was so worried about being a world champion, I looked at Jack Mulligan one time and I and I and every, I kept asking him over and over again. You think I'm gonna be like a be the world champion? And he'd go. Finally, one day, he just he slammed on the brake, pulled the car over outside of Raleigh on the way back, and said, "I look, I told you, I'm tired of you asking me this." He said, "You get five minutes or six minutes every Wednesday uh, to make, when we make TV that airs on Saturday to show everybody in the world what the difference is between you." Wow. And somebody, you and everybody else. And that is what's going to make you world champion or it's not. And I've never forgotten that thought. And Jack is gone, as we all know. But it's the truth. And back then, we only had, you know, five, six, eight, ten minute matches, right? Yeah. And then, you know, you know, the business has gone back and forth. Now they have longer matches. But it's up to them. And they shouldn't have to, it shouldn't have to be somebody creative. Coming to you with the idea. 
In fact, that's one of the reasons I, I like Bray Wyatt so much. He, he came up with these ideas, is my understanding. And he, he's taken time to figure out what works for him. And the company said, hey, you go get it together, come back. And man, he, he's come back with some phenomenal stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, every it's like book. Nobody told you to be Booker T. You felt it. Yeah. You dressed the part. You looked the part. I mean, I, I like to think God gave you part of that physique. But, God, you're in the gym training like crazy. You know yeah. me? I never had a physique like yours. You know what I mean? I, I never did. And I, I said to myself, now, I got to compensate by, you know, doing more free squats or Whatever I mean, I, I I want I can make these guys tired. They can't hang with me, and I mean I can't tell you how many guys are throwing up talking about Bud Sawyer when I told them <laughs> not to eat before they wrestled me. <laughs> Just to throw Bud's shit just threw his name out there. <laughs> he rolled out of the ring in Eugene, Oregon, when that was out there. They could have counted it to two hundred on the next day before he comes back in. <laughs> I, I, say, I, I told you not to eat, man. I don't care how good yeah. amateur wrestler you are. I just, I just, I just he had the best cardio. Yeah. <laughs> like Harley yeah. Race told me, you eat after three o'clock, you're mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're right, though, man. You're 100% right on that right there as far as uh, the young Yeah, guys. you just uh, the, 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 the kids have to feel. See, it took Ashley a while, but. The queen, and at first, I think she thought, man, is that going to be cool? Look at it now. Yeah. And she is the queen. Yeah. She dresses like the queen. She acts like the queen. She's got athletic ability second to no man or woman on the roster. And she's the queen. And she's just getting better. Can you imagine? I mean, if she started when she was, well, I, you know, that wasn't an option because she was going to college. But, um, um. I tried to apply everything to her, but I did wrong for myself. <laughs> so she, uh, she, she's, great. she's great. She's she's great. Uh, she's 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 literally um, heads and shoulders above um, as far as performance goes. She goes out. She's extraordinary. And and I'm not just saying that because I'm talking to you. Uh, I no, say I that we talked. I know. I, I say that because, uh, you know, when, when you, you know, young wrestlers, they may hear me say that and they may think I'm playing favorites, but I think about the yeah. performance. I think about, you know, when, when, when Charlotte walk over here to walk over here, or just to walk back over here, it means something. And a lot of times you, you may not know what that means there again. It's like the air, you know, you can feel it, but, but you can't touch it. You know, it's there. Yeah. Um, and those, those, those are the uh, performers to where, you know, when you're a fan, you know, you watch the whole show and then that one person come out and you touch your buddy and say, oh, man, but watch this one right here. Because you know it's going to be different. You know it's going to be, be, be it make you feel a certain way. Just like when you kiss your first girlfriend and, and a certain song was playing. Oh, man, you feel a certain way about it. But 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 I, I tell you, Rick, you couldn't have summed it up better as far as um, – you know, um, that six or seven minutes, I, I tell the young guys, you know, um, that time in the ring on television worldwide is worth is weight in gold. You cannot pay it's, 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 it's way above your pay rate. So, so take yeah. it and, and you, make you, it. You can't buy it. It's exactly, exactly my point. Hey, man. You can't um, buy it. It's, it's like getting a shout out from you on your show. I mean, you know, it's not like, you know, there's only one Booker T and a Booker T is giving somebody a shout out. You know, I can say this cause I'm, I'm, I'm speaking as if I'm you, you know, you know, you're much younger than I am and you have infinite wisdom too. So when you want to say something, I, I, I always worried that people think, and it, this is just the way social media has made me is that you have an agenda. You know, yeah. I'm like, um, I, I want to tell people they have a good match, you know, but it's like, uh, or you want to post something flattering, but then, you know, it's, it, it, it's really, for me, it, it's just, it's hard to explain. I, you know, it, it, I, I want to, to say, Hey, this, I could help you with this. If maybe the pace is too fast for what I personally like yeah. or what I think works, or maybe, um, which is a huge part of what I was going to talk about if I ever got out there, was some of the difference between good and great is just the cosmetic way you take somebody over. 
Yeah. Even just a simple headlock. You know, but you've seen it a thousand times, but you either go over the top of the back, the middle of the back, or go over somebody's ass. If you're going exactly. over somebody's ass, they're not giving it to you, right? Or you're not taking it right. Exactly. If you're going over the middle of the back, you're pretty good. If you're going over the guy's shoulders, you're a damn good worker. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, totally, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm talking about, right? It's the small things. It's, it's always the small yeah. things. It's never, I, 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 I teach my students, it's what happens before the move and what happens after the move. It's what yeah, makes you move. Yeah, even up. Exactly. Some, some still can't tie up with a damn. Yeah, auto punches, so auto punches, punches, auto kicks. Moving. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, auto punches, auto kicks. That's one of my pet peeves when I see guys can do all kind of flips off the top rope, but then they throw a punch or a kick and they, I'll go, oh. <laughs> you know? I, I'm going to get a, I'm going to get a slow mo of me punching Terry Funk. I look at some of the, I look back at the, some of those matches. Post it. Some of the guys kick. If you can't punch and kick, you can't work. Post it. You, need to post, that, you need to post that video just so these young guys will know what a real punch yeah. is supposed to look like. But I know, Brad, we got, I know you got to get out of here, but Brad, he got one more question he want to ask you. Right no, no, I don't have to go. First of all, I don't have to go anywhere, but I was going to say, or whatever, whether it's a forearm or an uppercut, I mean, you can't see through the uppercut. You can't see through a good forearm. It's some of this stuff. There's so much air that it just, um, you know, you just want to say, "Gosh, I can help you," but I don't want to be offensive enough to approach someone and say, "It just is an observation." If you just tighten it up a little bit, yeah, yeah. We're supposed to be your opponent. I remember working. Yeah. With, uh, I remember working with AJ Styles, and um, he was he's gonna. Uh, we had to do a spot where he's gonna hit me with the chair. And uh, I know the belt, and uh, and that 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 belt was like really huge uh, uh, in TNA. Uh, it was huge, and uh, and uh, I, I I asked AJ. I say, show me how you're gonna hit me with the belt. And uh, AJ, he bang right on top of my head with the belt, and I go, oh no 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 no. I said, let me show you how to do that. I showed yeah, him how exactly. To, <laughs> I, I showed him. I showed him, I showed him how to, I showed him how to do it properly. And AJ talks about that now when, you know, when it's some young guy that he has to go out there and work. Wow. Um, hopefully, you know, that, that young guy will be able to pass it down because it's about going, we got to work, you know, many, many times throughout the year. And if we don't go out here and work a certain way and make it look, exactly. tell my students uh, one, one other thing. I say, you don't have to necessarily know how to do this, but you have to act like you know how to do it very well. <laughs> you know? Exactly. And, and that's what uh, hey. I think, think this thing is. Go ahead. Hey. Hey, book. I was I watched AJ with um, the riddle with Matt Riddle the other night. Yeah, yeah. And I checked on Austin. I, I I guess it's going to be you and Matt Riddle at SummerSlam, <laughs> <laughs> brother. That kid's a handful. He is. <laughs> he is a handful to have. If he gave me one of those belly to back, he gave AJ. <laughs> I, I'll be. I'll go straight to the back. I'm going straight to the back, and I'm, I'm getting my gear, and I'm going. I'm straight. I'm not going to even get dressed. I'm going straight to my truck. Oh my god! Hey, listen. Um, they uh, I've taken a number of those, and we all have. But boy, it doesn't make seeing them any easier. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god. Um, yeah, Rick, he's a handful. Rick, I wanted to ask you, just as a longtime fan of yours and just a fan of wrestling, I had this debate with somebody at the Reality Wrestling School a couple months ago. We were talking about the four horsemen. And we were talking about evolution. And we were talking about which one, which group, you know, really means more when you look at the history of the business. And it's one of those things that you can't ever really say. You know, it's like Jordan or LeBron or whatever. You can't really answer it. But to you, when you look back at the four horsemen and then you look at what evolution was able to accomplish, what, what do those two groups mean to you? And do you favor one over the other? Um, you know, they both had a, a, a different meaning in time. The one thing I can say about both of them is they were both all business. You know, where there are factions that have been, you know, that are footnoted, but it, if they were disruptive or, or caused problems or, you know what I mean? I, I, I can I can feel comfortable in saying that anybody that works with the Forestman knows that we gave them everything we had. We weren't selfish. We were all about the match, and that, I mean, there was nothing any greater than being able to feed Dusty Road and the Road Warriors and Sting and those six mans or eight mans. You know what I mean? It was insanity. But you talk about the crowd. There was no, 
we didn't have to cut the buddy, cut the buddy off and get in the heat. <laughs> Only the potato me all the time. Let's cut them off. I'd say, for what? Right? They're just self standing. I mean, we have never sat down for the time they came out the door. We're in Philadelphia one night, and Dusty came out wearing road wear paint. They're still standing there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it was a different time, man. You consider the first time we went to Philadelphia when Crockett first started going? I don't even know if, if book, if you know this. I'm wrestling Magnum in Steamboat for an hour up there again uh, in front of 200 people. You know, within six months, we had 10,000 of us. Wow. We walked in there just on the cable when Crockett started moving along, remember? Yeah. We yeah. finally got in Baltimore. We got, we got, we did good in Philadelphia, the rest of it, we never got. We did okay in the Meadowlands, but that was like a joint promotion. But, um, just, yeah, when I first started going to those towns, man, me and Steamboat and me and uh, Magnum for an hour, me and Barry, but the crowd grew, started growing, and along came the road wires and Dusty, and pretty soon we were sold out. But back then, there had to be a pioneer, a guy to go into those towns. It was like Toronto. We, when we got Toronto after the cheek and all that stuff that went down there, it, which is such a major part of the history of our business, I mean, that, that town was just dead. It went from being a great wrestling town to nothing to be in a great wrestling town again. But it took a lot of work from a lot of people whose names get mentioned to get those damn arenas back up, man. <laughs> Same with Buffalo, New York. Jesus Christ, the only thing in Buffalo was me in an Italian restaurant and Jim Kelly. <laughs> 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 I don't think me and Jim Kelly didn't have some drinks. Him and his brothers, Jesus. <laughs> Oh, man, how much you miss it, man? Uh, how much you miss being oh, out there? Yeah, talk to me Listen, about it. How much you miss being out there? Oh, yeah, I just so, so much all but the think of the guys, the Kelly brothers, coming down and watching us wrestle in Buffalo. I mean, Jim Kelly, right, Hall of Fame, and I text Jim periodically now. He's had that terrible bout with that mouth cancer, you know. And yeah, yeah. Here yeah. I am. I mean, this, this is going to show you how lucky I am. I'm going to knock on wood. I started dipping the school in 1976. Steamboat gave me a dip. We're getting on a plane one time in a 402 Cessna. This is right after I'd crashed and I'd agreed to start flying again. Um, but that took a while. <laughs> so Steamboat got me dipping, right? So I dipped all the way until 1999. On New Year's Eve, I quit. I just got to watch Rod Carew. I, I can't remember who all it was, but different guys that I knew personally were having problems. Oh, the the kid from the Padres, um, the Hall of Fame baseball player from the Padres that died of uh, oral cancer. Yeah, I'm not sure who it was. Gwyn. Gwyn. Tony Gwyn. Tony Gwyn, yeah. Yeah. So I, Gwynn. yeah I, so mean, I yeah. finally quit, right? And then I get up there. Right. The WWE, and of all people, you know, I, I was riding with Sean from from um, Charleston, West Virginia, to Charlotte to go for Raw. And he said, you want to have a dip? And I had dipped in, you know, like five years, ten years, right? And there once again, I started again. And I dipped all the way until uh, they put me in rehab in 2015. And uh, I finally, I... I Kept dipping all the way through there. All I did in rehab was not drink, of course, but I smoked two packs of cigarettes and dipped two cans of uh, coal and drank 20 Diet Coke. So what's the difference? You know what I mean? <laughs> Still a rush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Got to scratch that in somehow, book. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to some idiot in the rehab, but it's already been in rehab themselves trying to tell me what's up. I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Flair, are you paying attention? Yes. <laughs> By the way, did you know Kevin Nash checked me into the Florida State Hospital in the insane asylum? <laughs> Remember that book? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Don't That's say Rick Flair hasn't done it all. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Hey, man. I tell you, uh, the, the business is uh, it's crazy, man, but... Uh, is it's a family, it's a brotherhood. It's one thing I can say about about this. Right, here we are, look, here we are talking, man. I'm serious, man. Oh, it's, it's a brotherhood. Go and I, 
I just, oh, you showed up my birthday three years ago. I didn't know if I was going to live. And here I am laughing, having fun with you again. So it is. It's a brotherhood, man. And um, it, yep. it, it, I, I got, I've gotten so much out of being a part of this business and, um, you know, meeting guys like yourself along the way. Uh, I remember when I became the world champion, you know, a, a young, young man, you know, um, never imagined a dreaming that I would, you know, one day wear the same world heavyweight championship title as Ric Flair wore. And that right there for me, it was, um, it was a moment, um, frozen in time that I would never, ever forget. And, um, you passing the torch to me, you know, um, and, and just being there for me over the years, man, I just want to say thank you, bro, because oh, you, God, you, I didn't, love you, man. You, you didn't have to, you didn't have to do it, man. You didn't have to. Um, that's why I say, man, you know, uh, you know I got to say right now, I feel, I feel guilty. guilty. I don't remember. I don't remember. If, uh, I just, I, you know, I just, all I, when I think of you, I just think of a good time. Does that make sense? Yeah, man. I, 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 I just think of a guy who's a hell of a worker and a guy I had fun with. I, I don't, I don't think of a, of, of passing the torch. Hell, you took it. That, that's saying, and that's a funny saying because that's, you know, when people say you pass the torch out. It's like my daughter says, she took the course, right? It's kind of like Sean said to me, there's a number of people that are just going to take that course and carry it. And there are people that are not. We're, that we don't have to name names. We know who is not carrying the course. We know who has. We know who we, we, who we will. I mean, we know. Does that make sense to your book? We know. It, it, it makes total sense. Yeah, man. We, don't, we're not, we don't have to say any more than that. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. What are we yeah. talking about us? Who is, who, who are they talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Some people are going to wonder. That'll be all over my social media. Who are you talking about? <laughs> you get that way. I, I, I tell people all the time, you know, you get that way. Who will get next time? <laughs> <laughs> you can be great. You can be great at what you do um, in, in this in this life. Um, and people don't like you. You won't be around for a long time. You can just be good at what you do. And people yeah. like you, you, you stay around for a long time, man. That's exactly. that's the type of that's the type of person I've tried to be, man. I've tried to be good at what I do. You are, my God! I mean, and people like yourself. Uh, like you know, we just have. I have. I've got more fun with you. I mean, I can remember I coming. I was talking about Meltzer. I just got, I just got <laughs> out of rehab, and I was going to. Um, well, I flew in on that jet from Green Bay where I'd given the Forty uh, Niners that pep talk. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For that, and Carano and I had to fly in that private jet because of a snowstorm and all that. Yep, yep. And the first thing I did, I walked into the Hyatt in Baltimore. It was for Raw, and Wendy was at, and you walked in. <laughs> I said, <"What>? Exactly. <laughs> I remember that? that. Yeah, I remember that. I'm laughing at the heart of coffin. <laughs> yeah, every time I see Booker, what time are we having the Jack and Jack coach? <laughs> yeah, the last time was on, on, on the on the boat on the Jerry Cruise. Yeah, of Mel course, Meltzer. Of course, yeah, indeed. I know. God, I had to walk away from that. <laughs> what the hell? That, that, that's one of those situations where you just want to be in another room. God, dang. <laughs> oh God! Well, I love you, fam. I love you too, love you, family. Bro. Hey man, um, uh, hug, hug hug your wife for me, man. Um, and I just want to thank. I just want to call her you. right now. She's up. She's upstairs. I'm gonna tell her we finished. She was excited for me to do it. Hey man, I want to thank you, on. man. They're, they're gonna open up the church, hopefully uh, in the early, like maybe the first week of August. So if they do, man, we got to make the run all this to the compound. Hey, bro. We're gonna spend about yeah. one salary there in a week, but. <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully the coronavirus hadn't made it to the island. Let's just hope yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, it had. They shut it down. It's been shut down. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and they're going to yeah. open it back up, I think, on the 25th of July. Well, let's, um, let's make plans, man. Let's make plans and get back out there. But again, man, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for stepping inside the Hall of Fame with me. And oh, um, all you. back, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, Rick. You're the greatest ever. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks for all the respect, guys. Bye, book. You got it, bro. Bye, guys. Take hey, care, guys. Rick. Inside the Hall of Fame, Brad Gilmore, the boat, um, uh, as well Thanks, as myself. Um, hey, Thanks, guys. Rick. Stick around. We will be back in a minute.